Poco as a brand has been growing really, really fast here in Europe, and they've done particularly well in the affordable device segment. We recently completed our long-term review of the Poco M3, and we're already doing our long-term review of the Poco M3 Pro, which is a follow-up to the Poco M3, obviously. But more importantly, it seems to be a direct sibling to the Redmi Note 10 5G. And keep an eye out on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel. There will be a direct comparison between the Redmi Note 10 5G and the Poco M3 Pro. Right then, the Poco M3 Pro is an affordable smartphone from Poco. And this device is really important because it brings affordable 5G through a MediaTek chipset and a 5G radio. The device itself, as I said, is very similar to the Redmi Note 10 5G. They're practically the same device, apart from a bit of branding and a little bit of a softer experience change. The device is a plastic and glass sandwich, so it's simple plastic on the back and Gorilla Glass on the front. So the Poco M3 Pro has an LCD display. That means it's not the super cool technology such as OLED as we saw on the Redmi Note 10 and a lot of other more premium devices, but it is a good quality LCD that has a 90 Hz refresh rate. And if you want to save a bit of battery power, you can switch that back to 60 Hz in the settings. That means that if you're using the dynamic 90 Hz settings, you'll get buttery smooth transitions and animations on your phone and it will look really, really good with movement. But if you want to save a little bit of battery life, you can change that to 60 Hz. In terms of screen quality, this is a full high definition plus display. That means that if you have high quality content, whether you're streaming on Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, or any other app, you'll get really good results on this screen. I particularly enjoyed watching some of the latest episodes of Lucifer on it, plus catching up on the series. The Poco M3 Pro is running a Dimensity 700 chipset from MediaTek. Yes, you heard that right. MediaTek now do affordable 5G chipsets. And this is very, very good. I've never had any issues with slowdowns or performance issues on the Poco M3 Pro. It performs really, really well and even manages to play some high-end games like Call of Duty Mobile. The overall performance is added to the fact that it has extra memory. In this case, the base model comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage built in. And in terms of storage, you can also expand that with a microSD card. What made the media experience or using the Poco M3 Pro as a main media smartphone really good was the fact that it also has a 3.5mm audio jack. Yes, it has a courage board. Not only that, if you're traveling as we were and staying in a, in a hotel. If you don't want to touch that remote control, you do have infrared blaster at the top, which means that you can use it as a remote control for your TV. I was using this on our recent road trip to England and it worked fine on the, on the TV in the room. In terms of ports, as well as the carriage port, the Poco N3 Pro has a USB Type-C port at the bottom for charging. And in terms of charging, it does fast charging, but it's not the super fast charging we've seen on Qualcomm chipset devices from Poco and Xiaomi. In this case, you get around about 18 watts or 22 watts of fast charging, but it works really well if you need to quickly top up your smartphone. That battery is actually a 5,000 milliamp hour unit. It's more than enough to get me through a day and even performed better than some Qualcomm devices like the original Poco M3 in terms of durability in certain situations. Though the battery is smaller than the original Poco M3, when spending a lot of time making video calls, for some reason, the Dimensity chipset gave me better battery performance than the Qualcomm one in the original Poco M3. In terms of cameras, the Poco M3 has a 48 megapixel camera and two 2 megapixel sticker cameras, one for macro, one for depth sensing. That's exactly the same setup as we saw on the original Poco M3. I've noticed no real difference in terms of performance, so I wouldn't be surprised to find out that it's exactly the same setup. Sadly, Xiaomi aren't very open about which components go into which phones. All we know is that it's a 48 megapixel sensor and the results are similar to the original Poco M3. The front-facing selfie camera sits in a dotch in the screen. That's a cutout within the LCD screen. And it's an 8 megapixel unit. It's nothing to shout out about. 
it works okay, but really does struggle in low light. It's something to be aware of if you're planning to use this phone for vlogging or for a lot of selfies. It might not be a great choice for low light, but in most situations, in good lighting conditions, it takes decent snaps. MIUI runs the show, but this is a slightly tweaked version of MIUI, which in turn is Xiaomi's version of Android for their devices. With the Poco launcher, you have the app drawer on by default. It has some extra tiny niceties throughout the operating system. But apart from that, it's pretty much indistinguishable from MIUI on other devices. Unlike the Poco M3 and other devices from Xiaomi, the Poco M3 Pro seems to be lagging behind a little in terms of updates from MIUI. For example, at this point of mid October 2021, I still haven't received the MIUI 12.5 update that most of my other Xiaomi devices have already received. The only one that hasn't received it is the one that is practically identical to it, the Redmi Note 10 5G. Make sure you're subscribed to the Tech Travel Geeks for the upcoming review of that device as well. In terms of MIUI and chipset, that Dimensity 700 is more than enough for most people. It can potentially struggle with high-end games whilst you're also on a video call, but that's really an edge case, which you shouldn't really be too worried about, unless you're someone who is very popular. But I'm not, so I wouldn't know. The Poco M3 was quite pleasant to use and on road trips performed very well. Though 5G's value, I'm not sure if it's worth the slightly higher price compared to other devices in the category. Make sure you check out what is important to you. Now for some of you, contactless payments through NFC are important and the Poco M3 Pro does deliver on that. That's a really good thing because other devices in this category don't have NFC. So you can use the Poco M3 Pro for payments and public transit. As with other devices we've seen from Xiaomi over the last year, year and a half, the fingerprint scanner on the Poco M3 Pro is recessed in the side of the device in a power button. So you have that same comfortable tactile experience of finding it and using the very fast and reliable fingerprint scanner. I really, really like this format and particularly so when it's recessed. There's also a volume rocker at the right hand side, which is tactile and easy to reach in a pocket. If, for example, you're wanting to turn volume up and down on the media you're listening to. So to sum things up, the Poco M3 Pro is definitely an upgrade from the original Poco M3, despite not having technically as big a battery on the device. If 5G is important to you, this is a really worthwhile upgrade. But please bear in mind that it also has NFC, so it's more versatile. The overall performance is great for everyday use and also decent for gaming, for games like Call of Duty Mobile or Mobile Legends. I can thoroughly recommend the Poco M3 Pro if you're in that sub £200 or sub $250 price category, but be sure to keep an eye on AliExpress and Amazon because as with all Xiaomi devices, prices can fluctuate depending on what offer is on or what national holidays are coming up and where you are. In terms of pricing, I can't recommend buying the Poco M3 Pro at its recommended retail price. But in what we see on Amazon and other sites, when it fluctuates to around about the £150 price, I can thoroughly recommend it there. So if you find a deal that you think is worthwhile, snap it up as soon as you can. We'll leave links in the description to where you can find the Poco M3 Pro on Amazon and AliExpress. If you do purchase from there, please be aware that you will be supporting the Tech Travel Geeks just as you would if you were subscribing to our YouTube channel. So click the subscribe button and have the notification bell turned on to be notified of when we do our upcoming videos, whether they're smartphone comparisons, smartphone reviews, or any other coverage of tech gadgetry we believe makes the travel experience better. But for now, that's all from us. Thanks for watching.